Howdy, Calc 2 students. Dan here. So it turns out none of you sent me any questions for this week. And, you know, frankly, that is what makes this different from me just going on Khan Academy and finding a video with this stuff and showing it to you. It, they don't answer your questions, and I can, but only if you ask them for me. So please send me questions next week. In lieu of that, let's do a Riemann sum. So, if we wanted to use the Riemann sum or the definition of an integral to figure out what is the integral from 1 to 4 of the function 3x squared minus 4x plus 2 dx, then that is equal to, so remember Riemann sum is just like doing the boxes and breaking it into rectangles. So we have the height of each rectangle, so that's going to be f, or our function here, we'll call that f, of, and then it's a test point which we don't have a name, so we'll call that x sub i. So each of the, like, the left-hand point or the right-hand point, the midpoint, whatever you're using. And then you have to multiply that by the width of the boxes, which we'll call delta x. And then we have to sum up the boxes. So if we count from i equals 1 to n boxes, and then in order for that to be equal to the limit and not, or equal to the integral and not a uh, estimate, we need to take the limit as n goes to infinity. Okay, so plugging that in, we get that this integral equals the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum i equals 1 to n, and then we have f plugging in x sub i, so this is going to be 3x sub i squared minus 4x sub i plus 2, and I have to take that all parentheses are your friend here, times our x sub i as a limit. Okay, so this is one way we can write the, the sum. The one that's kind of interesting, P.S., this might come up on your quiz, is that we can do that backwards. If we were given something like this, we could be asked, what is this the integral of? And we could be expected to give that as the answer. It's not that hard. You can sort of see 3x to 4x. Those appear right here. 3x sub i squared 4x sub i times x, x sub i. So if it's given in this form, it's not too bad. If we actually write out the x sub i as the interval divided by n and then multiply it in, then it gets a little bit more difficult. But in this form, usually not too bad. Okay, the only other real tip, if we have a function, here's a function, we'll say that function. So that function is increasing, it's always going up. Here it doesn't look like it, but it's still going up slightly. It doesn't ever go down. So because of that, if I were to take left-hand limits, I would get an underestimate or the lower estimate and if I were to take right hand limits I would get an overestimate or the upper estimate so left hand limits correspond to the lower estimate and Right-hand limits correspond to the 
upper estimate. This only works if the function is increasing. If the function is decreasing, then we switch these. Hope that helps and see you on the Zoom session. Remember to send me questions next week. Ciao.